Okay, uh, welcome to the video. Uh, in this video, we're going to finish finding the solution to the Burgers equation from the previous video. Um, and in doing so, we're going to go over the notion of weak solutions. Um, test functions, we're not really going to dive into test functions that well, but we will use that idea. Um, and also, uh, we'll briefly touch on the Rankin hugo noy conditions. So let's uh, just recall what we did in the previous video. So we were interested in solving uh, this PDE here, the time derivative of u, plus the spatial derivative of 1 half u squared equals to 0. Okay, And our initial data, so the initial condition was this piecewise function uh, 1 if x is less than minus 1, and it is minus x if x is between minus 1 and 0, and 0 if x is greater than 0. Okay, so our function looks, let's just draw a quick graph. Our function looks something like this. Okay, so this is u of x zero, and here this is the x-axis. Okay, so this is our initial function, and uh, we found that as time progresses, our solution begins to look like such. So this curve here begins to straighten up. And again, we maintain the same profile here. Okay, so this would be u of x at some time t. Okay, and in this case, uh, t here is going to be strictly less than 1. Okay, and what happens is we saw that as time approaches to 1, the solution actually becomes discontinuous. Okay, so our solution eventually it turned into this discontinuous function here. Okay, so this is u of x at time one from the left. Okay, and this is a problem uh, because the notion of derivatives no longer make any sense. If we're looking at solving this equation, we can't take the time derivative or the space derivative uh, for this discontinuous function, okay? So one thing we could do is just say, well, the, f the solution exists up to time t equals 1, and then we're done, okay? Um, but the, the real driving goal is that these kind of PDEs, they model some physical phenomena. And so we want to see, you know, what actually happens. We can't just give up um, when the solution becomes discontinuous. And so the whole notion here is to weaken um, weaken the idea of a, of this solution. We want to consider solutions to the PDE, um, which uh, in a way don't have any derivatives. Okay, we want to consider discontinuous solutions um, to this PDE. Okay, and that brings in the idea of a weak solution. Okay, so let's give the definition. So the definition, we say that u, so if u is some function in L infinity r cross zero to infinity, okay? If you're not familiar with this Lebesgue space, um, just think of u as being a bounded function over space and time. Um, we say that u is a weak solution to the PDE, um, and I'll write it as such, partial t of u plus partial x of the flux. Okay, we're keeping it as general as possible. so. This is for any flux function. 
Okay. So we say that it is a weak solution if the following equation holds. So if integral from zero to infinity, integral from minus infinity to infinity of u phi t, I'm using subscript t as the partial derivative, plus f of u partial derivative x of phi dx dt. And if this is equal to negative integral minus infinity to infinity of ux comma zero, phi x comma zero dx. Okay, and this is for all phi belonging to c1 c of r cross zero to infinity. Okay, so let's just go over this definition here. So the first thing to notice is that we want this equation to hold um, for any phi function. And you should notice that u and f of u, they no longer have derivatives on them. So we've weakened this notion of derivative. So in this case, we have, we have no assumption about diff, the derivative of u. Okay, um, and the other thing is, well, this is, this phi is, we call it a test function. Um, it's not, in this case, it's not infinitely differentiable, uh, but we just need that phi is continuous, that it's time derivative and space derivative are continuous. And this subscript C here um, is implying that it's compactly supported. And the idea of compactly supported is that it is, uh, it is non-zero on a compact set. Uh, so just to give an idea, if this is our space time domain here, then say one example of a test function, we could say that here phi is not zero in this space, but outside phi will be identically equal to zero. Um, and we're going to use this fact uh, later on when we show that something is a weak solution because the whole idea is that as time goes to infinity or as x goes to plus or minus infinity, the test function will be zero. Okay. And uh, the other thing is, well, where, where does this come from? If you look at the PDE, we multiply it with a test function phi, and then we integrate over space and time and use integration by parts. Okay, and that's where this formula comes from. So let's go back to the problem at hand. So re recall our solution. And uh, here we had that ux at one approaching from the left, we had this discontinuous solution. Okay, so we need to know what happens after the discontinuity is formed. And my claim, so my claim is that the solution uxt, the weak solution, is going to be 1 if 2x plus 1 is less than t, and 0 if 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to t for t greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so what is this solution? Uh, this solution, all it's saying is that the discontinuity is moving. Okay, so um, I'll draw it here. So the idea is that the discontinuity is moving. And so at some later time, we're going to get a solution at this point. Okay, so this, this what we call it is a shock. The shock is going to be moving to the right, okay, with some speed. And why it's specifically this, I'll discuss um, towards the end of, of why I'm picking this to be the weak solution. Okay, 
So the other thing we want to consider is the characteristic lines. Okay, we did that a lot in the past two videos. Um, so let's uh, let's take our time. <clears throat> okay. So this is x and t. So we want to take our space time domain here. This is minus one. Here is zero. And I'm just going to draw the shape. So we had something like this. Okay, so our characteristic lines, and again, you can look at the previous video to see why we got this, but the characteristic lines inside this triangle were um, increasing in slope. Okay, and this point here is time t equals to 1. Okay. So the other characteristic lines to the left of negative 1 keep going up. Okay, these lines keep extending on up. And to the right of 0, we have vertical characteristic lines. Okay, so these vertical lines. And what actually ends up happening is that the solution that I've proposed these characteristic lines are going to meet. Okay, they are going to meet at this line here. Okay, this line in purple. So these characteristic lines are going to combine and touch at this purple line. Okay, so whatever line comes, it'll come all the way up there and touch. Okay, uh, so this is the idea. And what's going on here, just kind of filling in the details a little bit, um, our solution in this region over here, u is equal to 1. So yeah, let me highlight it like this. So all in this boundary, u is 1. To the right over here, u is equal to 0. And inside this uh, triangle here, um, this is a, a little bit more complicated, but it's, it's the function that we found in the previous video. So now comes a, a little bit of a tedious part, but we want to check that the solution that we have proposed is indeed going to be um, a weak solution. Okay, And so that means we're going to take the integral from 0 to infinity, integral from minus infinity to infinity of u phi t plus f of u phi x um, dx dt, and we want to show that it is equal to this term here. Okay, so we're just going to march through the integration. Okay, and again, I'm going to keep it general, but f of u, remember f of u is equal to 1 half u squared. Okay, um, and a lot of times you'll see exercises like these in the books, um, but I think it's nice to see, see it worked out. So we're going to do that at this point. Okay, this is going to be, we're going to interchange the integral, and we're going to break up the time integral from 0 to 1. So this is u phi t dt plus integral 1 to infinity u phi t dt. And this is all dx. For the flux, we're going to, again, we're, gonna, we're going to break it up from 0 to 1. and plus 1 to infinity minus infinity to infinity f of u phi x. Okay, now because this, this does get a little bit messy, um, let's only focus on the term with u. Okay, so we're only going to focus on this term for now, and then we'll come to the flux term. So if we continue, 
Um, so the key point here is that we our solution is a strong solution from zero to one. Okay, so we can actually apply integration by parts on this term. Okay, so this is going to be the integral from minus infinity to infinity of, and I'll write here, u of x comma one, phi of x comma one, minus u of x comma zero, phi of x comma zero, and minus the integral from zero to one, ut phi dt. And this is all integrated with respect to x. Okay, so that is just this term here. We want to look at the space-time plot for this one. Okay, um, so just off on the side, at time t equals 1, we have this line here, which is t equals to 2x plus 1. Okay, and so the idea is we are integrating in this region and this region. To do this integration, we're actually going to integrate in this square domain, this triangular piece here, and then this triangular piece here. Okay, so we're going to, again, we'll have something else that we're going to break up over three integrals. And again, this kind of stuff is just a little bit messy, but uh, it's something you just have to stick to it and, and work out the details. Okay, so let's look at it here. So u, our solution, remember the solution we're claiming, to the left of 2x plus 1 less than t, we're saying our function is 1. Okay, so Our function over here, u is equal to 1, and here, u is equal to 1, and over here, it's kind of hard to see that, um, but over on this side, u is equal to 0. So using that fact, we're going to have the integral from negative infinity to 0 of the integral from 1 to infinity of phi t dt dx okay that's in here then we will have the integral from 0 to infinity of 2x plus 1 to infinity of phi t dt dx. Okay, that's going to be this, this region here, this little uh, triangular section. And then the last region is also going to be integral from 0 to infinity. Sorry, the last integral is actually 0 because our solution is 0. Okay. So this is a lot just to reiterate. This term here has now been written as this integral, this integral, and this integral, okay? So let's just simplify these terms. So um, this first term is not gonna simplify. Okay, and the next term. Here we can now just integrate using the fundamental theorem of calculus. We can just integrate this, and we use the fact that at infinity, phi is zero because it is compactly supported. Okay, so this becomes minus the integral from minus infinity to zero of phi of x comma 1 dx. And this integral here, this becomes minus 
the integral from 0 to infinity of phi of x comma 2x plus 1. Okay. Now um, notice that we are looking for this term here. Remember, that's the integral of this term is what we want the right hand side. So we expect that many of these other terms are going to cancel. Now we need to look at the flux function. Okay, so this was what we had remaining with the flux function. Uh, I'm not going to work out the details, I'm just going to give out what it should be, but you can work them out yourself. So if we repeat a very similar process, um, what we're going to find is that what we also have minus the integral from 0 to 1 from minus infinity to infinity of the flux, the space derivative of the flux times phi dx dt. And we will have plus the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 half phi of 0 comma t dt plus the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 half phi of t minus 1 over 2 t minus phi of 0 comma t dt. Okay, so all of the terms we now have this. Okay, we have gone through the integration process and we've arrived at this uh, complicated expression. Okay, but now we can use um, a few tricks. So if you notice, we have this integral here. Okay, of ut, the time derivative of u from 0 to 1. And we also have the flux derivative from 0 to 1. So if you remember, our solution is a strong solution uh, up to time t equals 1. So this can be combined. So let's rewrite the expression. This is going to be equal to minus the integral from 0 to 1 from minus infinity to infinity of ut plus f of ux times phi dx dt. Okay, but we know that u solves uh, this equation in strongly uh, in the interval 0 to 1 in time. So this is actually just 0. Okay, so now let's look at the integral. Let's look at this equation a bit more closely. Uh, we showed that this term will cancel with this term. Okay, um, down here at the bottom, you can see that this term is going to cancel with this term because of the 1 half. And notice we, we know the solution at u equals 1. Um, it's, z, it's 0 when x is greater than 0, and it's 1 if x is less than 1. So actually, this term cancels with this term. Okay, And now the last thing to do is to just show that this term will actually cancel with this term. Sorry, this term cancels with this term. And you can do that by just doing a u substitution. OK, so everything gets wiped off the board, and we're left with just this term here. We end up with plus 0 minus minus infinity u of x comma 0 phi of x comma 0 dx. And this is what we were looking for. So we've shown that u, the solution u we proposed, is in fact a weak solution. Okay, and I didn't write down the full solution of u, so just to reiterate, we said that ux t 
We're going to do big curly braces here. And this is for t less than 1, strictly less than 1. And otherwise, for t greater than 1, we have it as 1 if x is, x, uh, sorry, 2x plus 1 is less than t, and 0 if 2x plus 1 is greater than t. And this is for t greater than or equal to 1. This is our weak solution. And so now you might be asking, well, how did you come up with this solution? Why, why is this uh, a weak solution? Okay, how did we create this thing? To answer that question, the way we found the solution is through the use of the Rankine uh, Hugo Noy conditions. So what does this say? This says if our solution has a discontinuity, then the speed of the, the, the speed of the discontinuity has to satisfy the following relation. Okay, so F the flux of u left minus u right equals to s of u left minus u right. Okay, um, so the value to the left of the shock and the value to the right of the shock has to satisfy uh, this identity. So since we know u left and u right, we can determine what s is. Okay, so just for our problem, our u left is 1, our u right is 0, and remember f of u is 1 half u squared. So the Rankine Hugo Noy conditions tell us that 1 half minus 0 is equal to s times 1 minus 0. So the shock speed is equal to one half. Okay, so how do we think about this shock speed? So if you imagine if S is a very large number, we can imagine that the shock is moving very quickly. Okay, so just kind of a comparison. If if this is t and this is x, and again, say we start at t equals 1, then our shock, if, if s is very large, we imagine that the shock is moving very quickly to the right in this case, okay? But if s is a very small, then the shock is moving slowly, so it's much more vertical. Oops, let me draw it here. So this shock is much more slow. So the slope of this line is very large, but it's a slow moving shock. And the slope of this line is very small. It's a quick moving shock. So this discontinuity uh, is given by this form. So x minus x zero over t minus t zero equals to s, okay? Um, our initial discontinuity begins at 0, 1. So in our case, we have x over t minus 1 equals to 1 half. And this is exactly 2x plus 1 equals to t, which is um, the solution that we described before. Okay, so, so that's where I derived this uh, relationship in the original solution over here. Okay, the 2x plus 1 less than t, 2x plus 1 greater than t, because the discontinuity is um, at 2x plus 1 equals to t. Okay, so that is where 
we were able to derive this solution because we use this Rankine Hugo Noy conditions. Um, this tells you if there's a discontinuity, it has to move at this, uh, it has to satisfy this relationship here. Okay. So there is one very important detail in, in all the things that we did here, um, and that is this. Okay. Weak solutions are not unique. Okay. We found one particular solution to this problem, but in fact, there are actually infinitely many weak solutions that we could find uh, to this problem um, and many other problems. So when you weaken the notion of derivative, you, you, we weaken the notion of a solution, we are allowing more objects to become solutions. And since we do that, we lose the uniqueness. Um, and that's a huge problem because these equations are modeling some physical phenomena and we want them to represent some real solution. So if we're doing some simulation and we're modeling some physical phenomena, how in the world are we going to find the correct weak solution? Um, and that's a whole different topic. And that is, uh, it's to introduce an idea of some kind of entropy, um, an entropy solution. And so the idea is to limit, somehow limit the number of weak solutions to a smaller class of solutions. Um, and I may do that uh, video on that as well, because that's also an important topic. So that's it. Um, just to recap, we, we found a solution to the Burgers equation up to some finite time t equals to one, uh, in which case the solution was smooth. And after that time, we, we needed to introduce the notion of a weak solution, and we showed how you can prove that some function is in fact a weak solution. Um, and we use the fact of the rankine hugo noy conditions to figure out what that solution should look like. Um, but the, the most important takeaway is that your weak solutions are not unique. And that uh, covers it for this video. Thank you.